So working with the LCM, so lowest common multiples, we're going to be doing example number five on page nine in your workbook. Um, I will do part B first and show you again just a review of the steps we did in the earlier example. So the idea is to get your GCF first and then if nothing else is common, then everything just gets included once. Okay. So in order to do that, we will first break down 126 and uh, 441. So 126, since I can't think of two numbers, I will equally just split it. If I divide it by 2, it will become uh, 63. And then this gets divided by 3, becoming uh, 21. Another 3 to make a 7. And then with 7 to make a 1. So there, is, there are my all my prime factors for it. So 126 can be written as 2 times 3 times 3 times 7, whereas 441, again, we need to do the prime factorization on that. And once again, I'm going to use table. Um, so I will use, in this case, I think 3 should be able to divide it. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. Yep, 3 will be divisible by 9. So that gives me uh, 1, and that leaves me with times 4, and then 7. And then this can be divided by a 7. I see it being divisible by 7 um, 2 times, and then once. And then again by a 7, by 3, and 3, and 1. And if you're doing it a little bit differently, like I said, it doesn't matter. As long as your prime factors are all, we get the same prime factors in the very end. Okay? So, in order to find the LCM, the first thing you're going to do is look for your prime factors because we don't want factors to be repeating, right? So, this 3 is repeating. It's common. This 3 is repeating. It's common. That's a GCF. And then this is the GCF. And then, like I said, anything that is not right? So this 2 is not repeating. We will include this one and then this 7. So that's a major difference between the GCF and LCM. Uh, this would have been your GCF part, but then we continue on to include anything that is not repeated in all three. So this gives me then, if I multiply it all together, a really big number, which is 882. So my LCM for this question is 882. Remember, LCMs are always going to be bigger numbers than GCFs, right? GCF is snooty. It only picks what is common between all of them. But LCM loves everybody, so it invites everybody who's ever also left over. So it will be a bigger number. People who love more have more, okay? So we will see what happens with example uh, part A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this question a little bit because what I want to do is I want to include uh, something different to show you. So I'm going to include another number in here and say we're going to find the LCM between these three numbers because I want to show you something. So important to pay attention to what I'm doing right now, okay? So breaking down, and I think um, I should be able to break these down so without having to make trees for them or tables because 15 is just 3 times 5 easy enough. Um, 30 is, um, maybe you want to break that down a little bit because it has put more. So you can say 3 times 10, um, and then this will be 2 times 5. So this is 2 times 3 times 5. And then 35 is also easy, only two numbers, 5 times 7. Okay, and the reason I wanted to show this particular example is, um, you'll notice there is one GCF here, which is 5, which is common in all of them, right? So that's the only GCF we have. But here is where you have to, uh, we have to pay attention. Do you notice that there's a common one, 3, in 15 and 20? So because it's also common in 2, we don't want repeats. So that gets also counted once. Okay, so GCF is restrictive that it needs to be included in everything. But in LCM, it doesn't have to be repeated in everything. But we just don't want repetition, right? So this 3 also gets included, but only once. And the ones that never get repeated 
are this 2 and this 7. So those are the ones that never get repeated anywhere, but we will still include them because we love, because we're LCM. Okay, so do you notice the difference here what we've in other examples and in this one was that we initially would only have GCFs and loners. This time, the three is the one that is at least repeated in two of them. So we will still only count it once. Very important. Okay, so this is important, guys. So make sure you are paying attention to this part. So don't, don't repeat this three twice. So even if it's not repeated in all three, it is at least repeated in two numbers, so we will only include it once. We try to match up as many as we can. So once you multiply all of them, that becomes 210. Okay, so again, if at this point now you want to pause the video and try part C, you're more than welcome to do that, or you can continue to see what I'm doing in here. The same idea. I'm not going to do the prime factorization. I'm just going to write down the factors. So 154 then will become 2 times 7 times 11. And then 198 is um, 2 times 3 times 3 times 11. As you can see, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm looking at the answers. Again, look for something that is common in all three. And that's the 2 and the 11. And something else that is repeating, maybe in just two of them? Nope. Um, but don't think this is repeating here because this is only in 198. So I call repeating if it is in common in other numbers. So you do have to include both of these threes in because they do not repeat in other numbers. And then that's seven. So multiply all of these and you get one, three, eight, six. Okay, so hopefully you guys are understanding these topics. The rest of the examples in the book, I don't want you guys to do them. And please do the homework that is included as in your daily schedule as well as shown in this lesson. And then if you have any questions, I will address in our next class. Okay.